In today's show, we're gonna talk about Power Apps data models. So the idea is I keep running into people who are building really wide list, and so we're gonna talk about how to build a couple narrow lists and all the advantages that has. Now, it'll be a little bit relationships, everything all know relationships, I got this, but we're also gonna talk about how we use it in conjunction with some other tricks to make our apps more performant by being able to feed data into galleries instead of having to maintain and create a thousand controls in your app. It's a pretty cool little trick. So anyway, we're gonna dive into that, but first, Here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to dive into data models. And it's going to be more than just relationships, right? I don't want you to think and you already know all this. But one of the big problems we just keep running into is customers are building a single list, typically in SharePoint, and then they might have hundreds of columns because they're like, well, I got to ask all these questions, but it's all around one. HR performance review or one survey or one inspection report, right? They kind of have all these same scenarios, but they all have the same data design. So what we're going to talk about is how instead of having 200 plus wide columns, how a lot of times here at Power Apps 911, we design things so that we have the header record, right, which is the parent data. And then we have the response data in a uh, up and down list that's just got a couple of key columns. And then we marry the two back together and then you pull out the questions or the things that you want to prompt the user for and you put that into a different list and so we can really combine that back and make everything very dynamic so it's a very dynamic data model that's the word i couldn't think of a minute ago so the fun thing here though is if you go through this you know this is one of those things i mean we've used this for inspection reports we've used this for hr surveys uh, like performance reviews that type of stuff anywhere where you want the users to maintain the questions this is a great design because you can just give them a facility to add new questions and because the flexible is so dynamic or flexible or whatever you want to call it, it'll just feed it right back into the system and you don't have to do anything, right? If you're like me, you're kind of lazy. So, all right, with that, let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look at this so I can get back to being lazy on the couch. Okay, so over here on my desktop, I wanted to show you guys kind of an example of what you keep running into. So here you can see I've built a chore report app because my children are home, like yours probably are as well. They drive me bonkers. So we keep assigning them more and more chores. So this is what came to mind. Anyway, they freaked out. They're like, oh, I don't tell the world. Uh, but so with the chores, um, you know, here you can see it's a pretty typical, right? Did you feed the fish? Yes, no, maybe. Did you feed Chewy? Did you water Chewy? Did you clean your room? Did you clean my office? Did you cut the grass? You know, all of these things, and it's just a simple little, you know, input. But the problem here is that as they annoy me, they get more chores, but in this type of design, when you come back and you want to add another chore, you've got to edit your SharePoint list, add another column out there, and then once you've added the column, you come back in the app, and then you've got to put all the data in here. You got to figure out where it goes on the screen. You got to add a label with the question and the control. It's a lot of work to add to this list. And let's face it, we want to be very dynamic. And I, I, I'm using the chore example, but I'm telling you guys, I use this for uh, ins like inspections and stuff is probably the most common place we do this. So anyway, this is a typical design we're seeing, but imagine this times a hundred, like literally one of our customers, we had like 250 columns that they were asking for. And so on the SharePoint side, it's literally just one giant wide list, right? Chore one response, chore two response, chore three, and they just keep adding columns. And it makes a lot of sense. I don't blame anyone for getting this design because you go with what you know. And when they started, then we had a few chores or things to track, but then they kept adding and adding, and adding. And one day they woke up and they had passed 200 columns and it was a little crazy. Ugh. So instead, what we like to build is over here. I build this type of dynamic chore report. So the idea is we're getting the same header information. This is gonna be like my parent, if you're, because it's partly parent-child relationships. And if you haven't done parent-child relationships or you're still uncomfortable with those, I'd probably say go watch my video, Repeating Tables Like InfoPath, because I spend more time explaining how to do relationships over there. We're gonna show you some relationships here, but I'm not gonna get into the guts like I did in that video. So I'll put a link, eh, I don't know, somewhere up there with that. So anyway, so this is my parent though, right? Who did it? When did they do it? So just kind of that, you know, what customer was it for? What period is this uh, performance review on? Whatever that might be, that type of data, this all gets saved into a parent list. And so I think that's right here. And you can see, I literally just have a title column and a chore date column. That's it. I'm only collecting two pieces of info. Maybe you got five or 10, no big deal. You add the columns. So then we go back over here. But then now you see I'm asking all the same questions. So how'd you feed the fish? How'd you feed Chewy? You know, all the same exact questions, 
But notice it scrolls. Why does it scroll? Because it's a gallery. And the reason it's a gallery is because in reality, all of these questions are repeated over and over and over again. You know, they all have the same like input format. So I was able to make this repeating type of structure. Now you're probably thinking, but Shane, all my questions aren't the same, right? We've got some that are yes, no's, we've got some that are choices and some that are free text. Well, I promise you we have done that as well. We're not gonna do that in this video, but once you kind of understand mechanically how this is, that's that next level of thinking that I expect you guys to figure out or leave me comments down below and tell me, hey, we need some help. Make the video that shows how to you know, take this app to the next level. But today we're gonna to concentrate on just these simple, they all have the same response. So the way that we do that is over here, we just have a list called chores. And so here there is, you know, feed the fish, feed the chewy. So all the questions that are being asked. And so the way this gallery works, it's just showing you all those questions. And then when you save the answer to the question, we're going to patch that over and we'll look at how that works mechanically. But the really nice thing is like we can see, so the last question is fold the laundry. If we go over here and like, hey, new item, and we'll say, um, we'll say, watch my videos. And of course, click on the ads. I mean, shh, I would never tell anyone to do that. Anyway, so watch my videos is our new item. So we save this into our list over here, right? So it's in our SharePoint list. The next time the app loads, I'm just gonna use this little refresh icon I wired up, but it's gonna load it in. And you can see that watch my videos is a question down here with yes, no, woo, woo, and all we had to do was do it. So that makes it real easy for your users to maintain their own questions because they just show up in here. That's the magic. And of course, you know, we'll also have the ability to go in here and if you look at like reporting, so then I'll show you how to kind of pull this all back together. But that's the idea of this concept is that we wanna make it so that you no longer have to have this really big data set. Instead, we're just gonna have a nice simple one. And you can see that the way the answers come out gives you a hint of how we're gonna build it. But you can see here's their response. And then what uh, chore did it go to? So this is which one of the actual chore reports is it tied to? And then chore ID here is going to tell us what question it is. So a lot in my customer apps, it's usually called question ID, but I, I just stuck with the chore theme. And because you're all gonna ask, what does this list look like real quick? We'll click on list settings. And so then down here you can see um, they're just, so title, it was just text. You could rename the column. I didn't avoid confusion for you. Uh, but choice or chore narrow ID is just a number and chore ID is a number. So all of those are just numbers. When we were looking at the chores, this I just used the title, the text. There's no other columns here. And then for this one, I had title and then chore date is a, uh, a date field. So nothing complex, no fancy SharePoint features. We, if you've ever been in any of my classes or anything, you know I'm very anti the SharePoint fancy or complex columns. So this, this just continues on that. Okay, so that's enough of what is the app. So let's go break it down and understand how it works. So we'll hit the X. And if we look at the first screen, right, there's no reason to go through this one, but this is just your normal design. So basically these are labels. And these are just drop downs. And so when I made this, I literally copied and pasted, copy and pasted a whole bunch of times to get this design. That's why the drop down and label names are all very sequential. And then in this design, right, when I got done, I hit the button. We just did a patch, just patch chores wide, default chores wide. Remember that's the name of SharePoint list. And then title was the text input, date was the date, and then chore one was the value for here, chore two was the value for here. And remember, if you really wanted to add watch my videos to this, what you do is you would have went back over here to chores wide and be like, oh my goodness, all right, let's add that real quick. So list settings, scroll down a little bit, there's all the columns. We can say create a column and then we'll call this uh, chore 10 and it is single line text, perfect. We'll say okay. All right, chore 10 is there. So then we'd come over here to my data sources and be like, all right, I need chores wide to be refreshed, refresh it. And then I would have copied this question like that, control C, control V, I pasted it up here. And then I would have said, all right, let's change this text to be um, watch my videos like that. And then the answer's there, that looks good. And so we would check the little uh, drop down one underscore nine. So now I'd come in here, copy this. Whoa, we're almost there, I promise copy, paste, and so then chore 10, right, that's the name of our column, is drop down one underscore nine. And please, if you were writing this formula, if this is your app, 
Make sure that you're renaming all these things, right? You should not be using the default names. I was just too lazy to rename them all, but you should be naming them all something intelligent so it matches, right? So I would have said, all right, rename this to be DD for drop down um, watch video. And so at least in this case, it would have made this work look a little nicer, a little easier, right? But that's not what we want to do. We don't want this design. I don't want you guys doing this. If it's a small list and you're only going to have five answers or six answers, you're never going to change, they're never going to be dynamic, do this. If you're not, let's go over here and learn. So who did it and uh, when they did it, right? Those are just as you would expect. So there's a text input there and a date picker there. But then over here, this crazy thing is a gallery. And the gallery really just has a uh, the title, a separator, who cares, and a drop down. And so how does this work? So what we're going to do, we need a couple of pieces that kind of come into place. But the way that I start is on visible, I am going to clear collect a collection called coal chores, right? Coal being for collection. So collection chores. And I'm going to start in the middle here so i'm going to take the cold chore list well what is that oh we probably should figure that out so we go back up here to app and so you can see that on app on start i just went and fetched the list of chores remember that was uh, this window i just went and got this because this is going to be this is not going to change while the user is using the app so i went and fetched that and put that into a collection and then i, I set the purple but that's not important here okay so We've got this in a collection, and if we preview it, we can just see it's literally all of our SharePoint chores. Whoop, lots of fun. Okay, so then back over here, so on visible for the screen, what did we do? So we said start with that chore list, and I used the function show columns. So show column says, instead of getting all the data back, just get the columns I'm going to use. And in this case, I'm only going to use the ID column and the title column. So that's just making my next collection a much smaller collection. So it makes my life a little easier. So we showed columns, and that's how we got down. If we like highlight this, we can see it just returned ID 1 is feed the fish to, right, that's the data you want. I like it. I like it. So then what do I do is then I use the add columns function because one of the reasons this has to be in a collection is I need somewhere to store the answer. So I'm going to store the answer in a column named answer. And I have to then set a default value for that column. And in this case, I'm making it a dash because if you remember the default uh, or in my dropdown, I have dash yes or no. I didn't want to default to yes or no. I don't want my kids to have to answer. So that is, oh, sorry. So that is how we do that. And when we're all said and done, we then have a collection called cold chores with an answer that is dash for everything. And we have one row for every question. Cool? Cool. Okay, so then now that we've got a collection, then you can guess that the items for this gallery is just that collection. And so then this label is this item.title, which we're feed the fish. Oh, let's pull this back over. Then this items is hard coded to these three values, right? Because those are the three choices I have. I could be pulling these out of somewhere else. If I wanted to have dynamic answers be a thing as well, I could be pulling this. This just needs to be a table of data with the answers you want. And then another important thing, don't miss this step. This will be the people that are confused later. Right here under default, you've got to set the default. In order to make this work, your default has to be set to the collections value. Because if you don't do this, if you forget, which a lot of you do, and then you're like, oh, this doesn't work with drop downs. I get that comment on the InfoPath video all the time. The reason it is, is because when you then submit, it kind of resets things and it gets real confused. But if you give it a straight answer, it's happy. So that's how my gallery works. So then now if we come in here and hit the drop down and say feed fish is yes, how does that work? Oh, well, I should probably show you that. So then the other thing here on the drop down is you're going to have on change. And so with on change, what I want is every time the drop down changes, I want to patch my chores collection with this item. So patch the record the user's on and set the answer to be drop down to selected value. And if we look, right, drop down to is the name of this drop down. And then the other thing that's very important that a lot of people skip, because on change is a dangerous thing to do with drop downs. In the case of using a collection, it goes pretty good because the changes happen really fast. But if you're writing straight to a data source on the change, 
What you don't want is a user to change like seven things at once and Power Apps to get confused what was going on. So anytime that I have an on change on a dropdown in these types of scenarios, I put a spinner to show when, so when the on change starts, the spinner comes up and blocks the user from doing anything and then it patches and then when the patch is done, it turns the spinner off. Now you notice when I go and change feed Chewy, you never saw the spinner, right? I didn't see it. It wasn't the magic of movies. It, it doesn't come. The reason is because it happened instantly because I'm changing a local collection. But that spinner there is my protection. It keeps me from, for some reason, it takes a long time to save the collection. Maybe they have a really slow mobile phone and all of a sudden it did or they're out of RAM and their computer starts swapping and it freaked out. Whatever it is, I always want you guys, if you're going to use on change, to throw a spinner around. And the spinner is we've done before. You know, I did that in the uh, the tips and tricks video. I guess I should put a link somewhere for that too. Um, but so it is really just a gray rectangle that covers the whole screen and then just a little image file, right? I guess we could just throw a button on here. Insert button, set var show spinner to the opposite of var show spinner. And so then now if I press that button, Right, that, that's what the spinner would look like. So that's your protecting, that, that keeps the user from clicking more drop downs um, if they're going too fast. Let me get rid of that, boom, okay. Anyway, so now that we've done that, so now I can answer all these, boop, 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 right? I don't have to answer all of them because I didn't make them all required. I could make them all required, but I'm not. If you want to make them all required, you would just check the collection to see if the collection had any that uh, still had the answer set to a dash, and if it did, don't let them save. So who did this? The video demo did this. When did they do it? Apparently today is April 26th. I did not know. I don't know if, like you guys haven't had a haircut in a really long time. I'm kind of a little weird. My kids put bananas behind me, so who knows what day it is. Anyway, but so then now what does this save chores button do? I'm glad you asked. It's got to do a few things. So first, it's going to show my spinner. Remember, anytime I want to, it's going to, something's going to take a minute, I want to lock the user out from doing anything, so I'm going to use the spinner to lock things. So we'll do that. Then we are going to do this. Let's talk about this first. So we're going to patch chores narrow. Remember, that's the name of this list, okay? With defaults, chore narrow, so that means create a new one. The title is going to be text input one text, and chore data is going to be the selected date. Yep, those two fields are going to get patched. I like it. And then what we're doing is we're setting that into a variable called var record. And the idea of setting it into the variable var record is then that gives us access to all the pieces of the puzzle. And most importantly for us, it gives us the ID because we need to know the ID of that to create the relationship. So then you're going to have to use for all, right? And I apologize. There's a whole video on for all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's linked somewhere. But for all is a complicated thing, but in these type of situations, it's the only way to do this. And so what this says is for all the records in cold chores, right? So there's like 10 or 11 that I had. I want you to pa patch, patch, I don't even know how to say the word, patch chore answers. And so chore answers was this list. Okay, so we're going to patch this list. And we're going to set the title equal to the answer. So this would be the answer for that record out of cold chores. So in the case of the first one, it's going to be yes. And then set the chore ID. Remember, a chore ID equates to question ID. So what question was this an the answer for? It was for the feed the fish question. And then what do we want to do? We're going to then set the chore narrow ID. Who's my parent? And that is var record.id, the ID of the record we just did. So let's look at this. So we're going to have a yes, no, no, and then this. I don't know. We, have, we got some weird pattern here. All right, let's hit save chores. So the little spinner comes up. And this might take a few seconds. Oh, it went pretty fast, thankfully. But if it didn't, then, um, you know, that spinner keeps the user from moving on. So if we go back over here to chore answers and refresh the screen. And so we scroll down here, you can see that now chore narrow ID is two. So that's the video demos ID. And so for question one, we answered yes. For question two, we answered no. Question three, we answered no. Question four, we didn't answer. Question five was yes. All right. That looks like what we want. And the other way to look at it though, so let's go over here. So now that we know that we've put the data in, we've sync in the data, if we go to the reporting side, you can see that here are the different parent records. And so if we go into video demo, we can see that we did 
feed the fishes, yes. Uh, fed Chewy, no. Water Chewy, no. Cleaned your room, we didn't answer. Clean the kitchen, yes. Right, and I know with my kids, they didn't answer. It means they didn't do it. Um, but so that gives you a way to pull that data in. So how do we do this? This is really about relationships at first. So this is just all the items out of chores narrow. So all the chores that have been done. And so then what this is, this says, hey, filter chore answers, right? So that's this SharePoint list again. Filter it where the chore narrow ID is equal to the gallery three selected ID. So whatever one they select over here, oh, let's collapse that up. Then we're going to show its results over here. And so that's how we do that side of it. But you're like, well, wait, Shane, you're showing me, if you look, right, it says feed the fish here and feed Chewy or fed Chewy, but we don't have that store, right? So that's where we have to go to another level with our relationship. So if you go into the gallery, this item title, that's the answer. And so what this one does is this one does a lookup and figures out, all right, the chore ID, right? So in the case of chore ID one, it went to a uh, cold chore list and said, hey, what is chore ID one? ID one, that equates to feed the fish. So that's how we relate the data all back together so that we don't have to store any of that stuff or it could be dynamically changed after the fact also because everything's derived from an ID. Now, super important here, right? I've warned you guys before, I'll warn you again now, lookups in galleries can be very expensive, right? Because lookups in galleries means that it has to go and do that thing one time for every row of data. So if you have a thousand rows, you have to do a thousand lookups, your app's not gonna work very well. In this case, I'm pretty constrained though, right? I've only got a couple, up to a couple hundred in the biggest customer case I've seen, uh, rows in the answer set and the chore list. So what we did was back when we first started the app, we went and got the chore list because we said that's not gonna change one of the apps open, cool. So that is fetched, that is sitting here. So then when I do this lookup, I'm not looking up against SharePoint directly, I'm looking up against that um, collection. And I did that on app on start, so it's always here. So this is acceptable. There's no real performance penalty here because we're not trying to do a thousand data calls, we're just using a bunch of stuff that's in memory. So, but that's the kind of the missing piece of it there for a lot of people is how do I get back and figure out that I, question six is, I don't know what even is question six, clean the toilet, Ugh. Um, I The way I find that out is by looking up into the list and saying, all right, ID six equals, and in that case, I think it is, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and six is clean the toilet, yay. So. That's how you make a related data model. Now, for a bonus tip, I'm not gonna show you how to do it, but we're gonna talk about it for a second. So what if you didn't want all of these to be drop downs? You wanted to have in your one dynamic list questions that were uh, not only drop downs, but they were comments, and there was a radio button one, there was a true false one, right? You had different options, different ways to respond. Totally possible. What you have to do though, is then over here on your chores list, this one, You'd want to add a column for question type, okay? And then over here in your gallery, you would have different controls that showed, so it would basically say if this item's question type was a rating, then show me the star control, right? And so you would then, that's how you do it, is you would ch use a bunch of if conditions to control what was shown here, and then you just have to work out how you're gonna patch all those different values back, and it's just another type of if formula based on what data is coming in. So um, a little bit trickier, um, and it's not, even, it's not the if on the patch side, it's on the on change, you end up having to write some if logic in here. But anyway, it's a little trickier, it's a little more advanced than I wanna like dive into with this video, but I wanna kinda of give that to you guys because I can tell you that once you wrap your head around this model, and it's hard, We've had customers tell us we couldn't design the data this way because they couldn't understand what we were talking about. So that's, hopefully we'll be able to show them this video in the future and avoid that. So if you're a customer watching this, this is what you want to do. But anyway, uh, but once you wrap your head around this data model, it is a super great way to start designing things. Because the other thing that's really great about this, think about this one. So when we're on this screen, there is one, two, let's see what, there's 10 of these-ish, so 10, so 20. I don't know, there's like 20 something controls here just to do the questions. Over here, there is not, right? There's one gallery, there's one label, and one drop down. Three versus 20. And if we end up with 200 on the first screen, we still just have three on this screen. 
So this also cuts down the size of your app, which makes your app faster and it makes it easier to maintain. I just can't do justice for how this setup that we're all used to, that I, I understand why you guys use this, is where we all start, but when you start to do really wide lists and you start to do this and you've got a hundred questions that are all yes, no's or all ratings or all very similar in pattern, this does not scale for you, the, the app creator, it does not scale from a performance standpoint. You've got to get away from this and that's where you come and you put this in. And you know, I built this, right? This screen took me literally five times longer than this screen mate did when I sat here on Friday morning, I think, and did this. So this sounds harder. It's gonna take you a little bit to wrap around red, but you wanna do this. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox. Well, I'm not really on a soapbox. I'm just naturally this tall. Um, anyway, hopefully that helps you guys. If you got questions about this, leave me comments. I always respond. It takes me up to a week sometimes to respond. I get that. Or you can hit us up at Power Apps 911. We can help you build this and do all those fun things. We got training options, all types of fun stuff. And if you are a training uh, curated library customer, you can download the app. So, um, I don't know. I think that's what I got. So, how does this help? Is this good for you guys? I love ideas below. You know, when it comes to making videos, it, it's sometimes harder for me when I'm like, all right, we've done all these things before, but what are the things that aren't clear for you? Tell me so we can make those together. And with all that, I'm just going to say, Thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.